Good evening. So I wanted to do something a little different tonight. I wanted to do a movie review. Uh, it's been a while since we've done some movie reviews on these channels. And uh, I think there's a few things I like to watch I like to pass on to you guys. Now I know we mainly talk about Bigfoot and cryptids. Uh, but I've always been interested in the larger paranormal world, whether it be ghosts or aliens or UFOs and underground bases. And uh, one that caught my attention lately was called Above Majestic. Now, this is with uh, David Wilcock and Corey Good. And in the UFO world, I know there can be kind of controversial names. Uh, but I've been studying the phenomenon in UFOs since the 90s, since I was a kid. Like I told people, I was kind of the weirdo kid in the school library at third grade, and there was a small section on UFO books, and I think I pretty much read them all. And uh, when it comes to Bigfoot, too, I think it's very important to remind people and let people know that I talk to people in the UFO community and the bigger spiritual community that goes along with it, and I call them my brothers, because it's really, to them, you're like, yeah, there's this eight to ten foot tall ape roaming the North Woods that seems to have some strange abilities that people have been seeing for centuries, and they just don't even blink. They're like, yeah, and? And they're like, well, that's what we're studying. Because when you really get into what these guys are into and the things that they look into and how deep the cover-ups, the huge names, the history, the alternate history, it's really quite incredible. And uh, so I've been studying it for a long time. I kind of didn't know what to think. I've been watching Corey Good and David Wilcock and Emery Smith and watching their presentations and they're quite fascinating. Not that I necessarily believe everything they say, uh, but it does kind of coincide with a lot of what other people have said and a lot of theories that are out there. And uh, I got to say, in general, this was a really good documentary. Uh, I went in it a little apprehensive. It was kind of, to be honest, the first little bit started off slow, but when you're tackling such a big subject, by the way, the documentary is a little over two hours. It... Uh, you really have to, to kind of build up to what all these people are talking about and the uh, secret space program. And uh, the production values were good. The um, effects were good for a documentary to show a representation. Now, the special effects weren't like, I'm going to fool you into thinking you're seeing the real thing. They were more like a representation or like you would see in a documentary. So the visual effects were very good. Audio levels were good. Lighting levels were good. I always thought David Wilcock was a blonde. Is it just me? He must have dyed his hair or cut it short, and it looks darker when it's short. I don't know. Uh, or it's just the lighting. But, yeah, a lot of familiar faces. It's really good to see Dr. Bob. This guy was towards the end of the documentary, Dr. Bob Wood. He introduced me at the Orange County MUFON, the OC MUFON, when I gave my talk about the 10 types of Sasquatch. And I knew he was kind of a big wig in the uh, UFO world, but I guess he's actually really famous. And it was cool to see him in there. I'm like, hey, I know that guy. Um, but, yeah, it, it really... It starts off slow, but it really crosses and spans everything you've ever heard in the UFO community. Everything from secret societies to from like Skull and Bones to the Illuminati to the uh, uh, the Freemasons, all that stuff to the w New World Order and their connections to Nazism and World War II. And it goes all the way through it and really paints a picture of alternate history. It gets into... Uh, a lot of different stuff going way back, uh, stuff that's kind of interesting from the Sasquatch world and from the cryptid world, because they talk about some of these creatures. They talk about the, uh, like the Paracas skulls, the elongated skulls, which we're going to show some pictures here. It uh, also talks about ancient civilizations and the uh, pyramids. They talk a lot about Antarctica and World War II and all that kind of stuff. And then it paints a picture of the secret space program and all the people that are involved with that around the world and it kind of just goes through the history and how it all kind of all melds together to modern times and our modern ufo cover-up and uh some of the technology that we stole some of the technology that was given to us by extraterrestrial species and our colonies off planets it talks about the different alien races and their involvement some good some bad some indifferent uh, it talks about the uh, slave trade of human people and the sex trafficking and how it all ties back to cults and how the world leaders all come from very common families and very common bloodlines, how most of the, just about all the U.S. presidents are connected through bloodlines and, uh, you know, Yale and Skull and Bones. And then it goes all through that. And then it talks about uh, renewable energy, uh, It you know, and talks about uh, how it, Nikola Tesla and his ideas of bringing 
um, free power and free energy to everybody and how that would solve a lot of problems, how our advancements have technology, but we're still stuck on fossil fuels, UFO craft and how they've been reverse engineered and how there's just all this technology that's been slowly leaked out. And the bigger picture of disclosure, they always talk about disclosure. And instead of the slow trickling out of information, the massive dump, they talk about all these different um, sealed subpoenas that they're subpoena people. Uh, basically, the revolution that we're on the very tip of things being changed. Now, all this, I don't necessarily believe at all, but I think it's quite fascinating. And I think they have, um, they make some very genuine points about history. You know, the, the whole story about history is told through the eyes of the conqueror. Uh, I think there's a lot of that in there and how modern science and with the realm of quantum physics and everything else, I think a lot of modern science has been thrown out anyway. And when we look at Bigfoot and other cryptid type creatures out there, uh, a lot of that gets thrown out there, you know, hey, these things shouldn't be able to run this fast or they shouldn't be able to cloak or have glowing red eyes or see as good as they do in the dark or be able to, you know, um, cancel out technology. Well, if we, if we think, if we throw out what we know and start over again with science and physics in a bigger quantum realm, it starts to explain a lot of this stuff. And I think for us Sasquatch people, as cryptid people, a little more grounded people in some sense than UFO people, uh, and this kind of ties into some of the paranormal stuff, but this documentary, I went into it the first 10 or 15 minutes. I wouldn't say I was bored, but it was kind of slow. And then it built up and it turned out to be really good. For me, like I said, looking into this subject since I was, I don't know, eight or nine years old, all the way up to recently, kind of jumped in, kind of jumped out. Everything from underground bases and CIA cover-ups to the JFK assassination to all the different stuff. And this movie really did a great job of tying it together. Um, the Cliff Notes really doesn't do the movie justice. It's kind of like the Subnosis. If you take all of the other works and hundreds of books, thousands of books and videos and interviews, everything that's in the paranormal world going way back, everything that's all in the UFO world, and you piled them and organized them into different subcategories and genre and threw out the junk and had stuff that's a little more verifiable and had the better type stuff out there, and you talked about all the different alien species and technology and all the different quadrants that are in the UFO world. And uh, you gave them an opening paragraph. This movie is basically the opening paragraph because in a good story, your opening paragraph, uh, you know, you're going to describe what you're going to talk about and you're going to make your points and then you're going to explain your points. And this, they really crammed a lot in two hours. I was actually very impressed with this movie. Some of the things I didn't like was... I had to I had to buy it, not rent it. I think I bought it standard definition on Amazon for like twelve bucks. I was hoping to rent it for a couple bucks. I don't know. I know a lot of times on Amazon and some of the other streaming services, when a movie comes out for the first three or four weeks, you can only buy it, and then eventually you can rent it. Not a big deal. I bought it, which just means I should need to watch it again, so I get my money's worth. Uh, but yeah, everything you've ever heard about aliens, from recovered craft to, you know. Nikola Tesla to Area 51 and recovered bases and the Nazis and um, the real reason behind op Operation Paperclip, pretty much all of it. And it puts it into a very logical and viable comprehension. It really brings it all together, this documentary, which I was very impressed. I didn't think you could really do that. Um, like I said, a lot of it's uh, very far-fetched. And I know there's not a lot of physical evidence for this. There's a lot of testimony. And uh, if you don't believe it, if you don't leave, believe one lick of it, I completely understand. This is a big stretch. This is very far and disconnected from most people's realities and how we were brought up and raised and what's in the history books. Uh, but when you start kind of adding it in and when you start looking at other paranormal realms, it all kind of starts to make sense. And whether you're a conspiracy guy or a UFO guy or a Bigfoot guy um, or a paranormal guy looking for ghosts, uh, it's all very fascinating. Like I said, the graphics, some of the quotes that they have in here uh, throughout history to patch it together, I was, I was very shocked at how well this was put together. I thought it was just going to be like a two-hour-long version of Ancient Aliens on History Channel, which isn't a bad thing. It's just uh, – but they really brought, really brought it all together. Uh, now, I know there's some controversial names and guests in here, and if you throw it all out the window, it's still worth the $12 admission. It's still worth the – 
two hours it took because it was very fascinating. It got you to think, even if it's like, well, I don't know if I believe all this or I only believe 20% of it. It still got you out of your bubble. It still got you to think. It kind of made some connections in your mind. And uh, I was really shocked how good it was, to be honest, because I actually went into it with very low expectations. I would give it four out of five stars. Uh, this documentary would be at home on Netflix or HBO. Uh, the production quality and values were good. The animations were good. The pacing was good, although I think the first little while started off slow. But once you kind of watched it, you kind of see because it was like a crescendo building to where the last couple hours, the because it was over two hours, the last hour of the movie was just so much coming at you that if you weren't familiar with UFOs and the whole realm of this, you probably would be a little lost, but they do a good job of pacing and keeping you going. So that's basically my review. Hopefully I have better luck than I did when I reviewed Todd Standing's uh, uh, Discovering Bigfoot. I gave that a bad review and almost ended in a lawsuit, but that's a whole other story. So anyway, I uh, hope you like it. We're trying something a little bit different. Uh, please stay safe in the woods. We got a lot of stuff coming out this week and uh, take care of yourselves. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find me at unstellar.com. You can also find me at twitter.com at realmatsquatch. This is where I post notifications for new videos outside of YouTube. And I'm also on Instagram. I post uh, other random pictures here too. And uh, sometimes some stuff about Bigfoot as well. And you can always email me at matchquatchpresents at gmail.com.